It's a very silly tune, isn't it? Yes, yes, but it just makes you dance, doesn't it? It does. But you everything know, makes me dance. Does it really? You make me dance. Yes, the whole world makes me dance and sing. <laughs> Tra -la -la. It must be so nice to be you, dancing through life. Oh, it's fabulous to be me. <laughs> so people come up to me in the street and say, I wish I was you. Really? Yes, yeah, all the time. <laughs> I say me too, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> As Roger Miller said, I, I may be schizophrenic, but at least I've got each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for coming. My nice pleasure. to have you here. You know, I actually thought I would see you the other night because Saturday Night Live had their 25th anniversary, and uh, you've hosted that show several times. Didn't I did. You? I hosted it four times in the 70s. In the 70s. In the very early days. Yes. But I, I was invited, but I didn't go, actually, because I, um, I, I was busy. I was signing books and doing things like that. Uh, and also, they can go on a bit, you know what I mean? These reunion things yes. can last a little bit too long for me. It was me. like a three-hour reunion. Three-hour yeah. reunion, and uh, 12 minutes would have been enough, I think. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Well, no, it's not true. I mean, you have to say about Saturday Night Live that it is a great academy. Without Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. there would be nobody in show business. No, you know, it's true. <laughs> it's like... No, almost everybody great has come through that show. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they've never heard of the word rewrite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. or, or cutting, you know. I mean, we used to have a joke about Saturday Night Live that what's the difference between life and a Saturday Night Live sketch? What's the difference? Life doesn't go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> you... <laughs> I will not be hosting the show again. No, I don't <laughs> think so. Until the 2070s. You British comedians coming over here. Yeah, well, we, you know, we are, we are celebrating our 30th anniversary. We That's Python right. boys, That's you right. know. Are you doing a reunion that we absolutely can make fun of? Absolutely not, no, not at all. <laughs> We've agreed to absolutely disagree on everything for the rest of our lives. Oh, good. Yeah. That's pleasant. Actually, we were offered a tour. My, uh, we were offered a tour of America, six cities, and we were given, offered $10 million, and Michael Palin turned it down. Really? A shocked silence. <laughs> yes. Maybe we I could jump in and just dress stupid. up. Really? Yes. We are that Were the dumb. rest of you furious about this? I Not mean... really. We're kind of all right. Then I guess we won't do it then. Yeah. That's so much money. Isn't it? Yeah. But at least we don't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you showed them with all their six million dollars. Let's talk about this book, The Road to Mars. It's uh... terribly funny. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Honestly, really Wow, funny. I hear a great yeah. buzz on this book, and it's coming from you. He's yeah. the first, the first uh, author to write his own blurbs. Yeah. All the actually, blurbs are the, you. The blurbs are actually not there. Right? This blurb These is are by, funny. This is by Steve Martin. It says, I laughed, I cried, and then I read the book. <laughs> They're very funny. Uh, now, the, it's, a, it's an unusual book. It's science fiction. It's sort of science fiction. It is about the future, but it's about the future of show business. And it's about two comedians on the vaudeville circuit in the future who have a robot who is a Bowie robot. And a he, David Bowie robot? A David robot? Bowie model, yes. You could be able to buy whichever model he wants. He's right. a 1983 model. Right. You know, that big hair, and put on your red shoes. Right, right. That sort of, he's not the Ziggy Stardust. No, no, no. You wouldn't want that around your living quarters, really, would you? <laughs> <laughs> and how, what he does is the robot doesn't understand what they do for a living, which is to make humans bark. Because they're comedians, and we bark when we laugh. Right. Just like that wasn't. Um, <laughs> and, and so he tries to write a thesis on comedy. And he tries a mathematical approach, and he tries to do, try to search for a comedy gene. And he really is quite unsuccessful at this. Right. But he eventually wants to become a stand-up comic. Now, I've noticed, I was flipping through the book, and I realized I'm in this book. You are in the book, yes. Yeah. You, you classify two different kinds of comedian. Yeah, well, book. comedians can be divided into two kinds. There's the red-nosed comedian, who makes jokes about the body, and pooping, and farting, and, you know, Robin Williams. Oh, right. oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Well, you know. What the hell just happened? <laughs> I was doing a bit of red nose, oh, you see. Oh, okay, yeah. And that the was some classic face. Robin Williams you just yeah, did. Thank you very much. Having an epileptic Hello, fit. Hello, <laughs> Anyway, that's a red nose. And the white face is very, very controlling. And right. he sort of makes cru cruel and cutting jokes. And his jokes are all about death, really. He just said, by the way, you're dead. <laughs> and, so, and, and what am I? You are a white face. A white face. Because so people look at me and think of death. Not in time. <laughs> Although you may have died occasionally. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We'll talk <laughs> they, about that. They, you, are, you are, I mean, he, he's a red nose. Yeah. You see, he's lovable. Mm -hmm. People love him. It's they true, do. He's a lovable man. Yeah. <laughs> he's a real human being. <laughs>
They like him. And what's interesting is that red noses and white faces always go together. They, exactly. they kind of they need each other. Yeah. So you can sit back and make some cutting remarks. Never from... done that. Never did that. <laughs> I've always been the. And it's okay to be a white face. I'm a white face too. You are. It's sad, yes, but red noses are desperate for love. They'll do anything to be loved. <laughs> I'm white faces. I've read Andy's. Yeah, like, I've read, yeah. I've read like, Andy's classified yeah. ad. Yeah. They'll do anything for love, like pooping and farting. Yeah. 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 Well, it's to make people love them. You yeah. see, it's adorable. You right. See? Yeah. I didn't well, know that that was a term of endearment. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's oh. just in England. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> and white faces don't care. You see, they don't give a. Shit. <laughs> they yes yes. It's... Or a poop. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do you can say that word in England on the air. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> this is can't. good evening. Here is the news. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that was a big story over there. Well, uh, now, now let's talk about you. As it, you, we, we're talking about styles of performing, and you say you're a white face, but you actually you like to do you like to perform. I've heard in museums. Yes. You like to perform with your guitar in museums. This is true. I did my first uh, gig actually last year. In talking of that, it was a wonderful segue. See, I have my guitar here, beautifully. <laughs> Wow. Wait a minute. <laughs> that is so <laughs> cheesy. <laughs> cheesy? I mean, this uh, is, this is endearing. I'm sorry. Did I say cheesy? You did say cheesy, yes. Oh, okay. That um, was wrong of me. It was wrong. There is no cheese. Uh, this now, was you, this made is... by my good friend Danny Farrington, who makes guitars. And he made a little baby tailor, and he, he painted it with my book jacket.